We've seen how the magnetic field creates a magnetic force on a moving charged particle. It turns out trying to extend this logic to determine the magnetic force on a wire carrying electric current or a bunch of moving charged particles doesn't take that much extra effort. All we have to do is figure out a way to go from the single charge to the multiple charges that are part of the wire. You see, the force on each charge sums up to create a total force on the current carrying wire. To start, however, what if we had an electric field acting perpendicular to a current carrying wire? Does the wire feel an electric force? Let's move to three dimensions so we can see things more clearly. It turns out the wire actually doesn't feel an electric force, at least not any meaningful electric force. How's that possible? What I haven't shown here is that the wire, although it's carrying current, it's neutral as a whole if we consider the negative charges in the wire as well. Technically, it's probably the negatively charged electrons that are actually carrying the current, but no matter how you slice it, the wire as a whole is neutral, so whatever electric forces the positive charges in the wire feel are counterbalanced by equal and opposite forces felt by the negative charges. So an electric field doesn't actually exert an electric force on a current carrying wire. It might exert a force on, say, a charged rod like we saw in one of the previous modules, but that's because the rod has some net charge, either positive or negative. A neutral wire carrying electric current doesn't have any significant net charge, so there's no significant net force as a result. But the situation's different for a magnetic field. You see, a magnetic field can exert a magnetic force on a neutral current carrying wire. How? The key is that electric fields create forces on all the charges, whether they're moving or stationary. But magnetic fields only generate forces on moving charges. That's the key. In a current carrying wire, whether the current is being carried by negative charge carriers like electrons or positive charge carriers, only the moving charges experience a reasonable amount of magnetic force. And that magnetic force is enough to pull the wire in a particular direction. So we've got a lot of the intuition at this point, now all we have to do is put symbols to it. Let's imagine that in fact we have positive charge carriers which make up the electric current. The analysis works just as well if we have negative charge carriers like electrons carrying the current instead, but let's work with positive charges. Each charge carrier might have the same charge, so let's call it Q. How many Qs are in the wire segment we're looking at? Let's say there are a capital N of them. Does any of this look familiar? You might remember we did a similar analysis when we were trying to define current in the first place. This led us down some more definitions and eventually we ended up with a formula that looks like this. The current in the wire segment is NQAV, where little n is the number of charge carriers per unit volume, Q is the charge per charge carrier, A is the cross-sectional area of the wire, and V is the drift speed of the particles. We can apply the same logic to our current carrying wire segment here. As long as we remember that the total number of charges, capital N, is equal to little n, the number of charges per unit volume, times the volume itself. The volume itself is just the cross-sectional area times the length of the wire. Now we're ready to really start making some moves. You see, the total magnetic force that this current carrying wire feels, that's what we're after. It's really just equal to the total number of moving charges in the wire times the force that each moving charge feels. Each moving charge feels a force of Q times V cross B, where Q is the charge, V is the average drift velocity of the charge, and B is the magnetic field that acts on the wire. Since V might vary wildly among each of the charges, it makes sense to use an average measure, hence why we use the drift velocity in this case. And we just said the total number of charges big N is little n times the cross-sectional area times the length of the wire. In that case, the total force on the wire segment is little n times A times L, in other words the total number of moving charge carriers, times the average force on each charge, which is Q times V cross B, where V is the drift velocity. So we're in a weird position here where we keep on expanding out variables, but something interesting happens now. We can actually change the groupings of these variables a little bit. Here we'll stick the length on the outside, and on the inside we can write NQAV crossed with the magnetic field. Now, what is NQAV? Does it look familiar? It's just our definition for the current in the wire, where V is the drift velocity. It looks a little weird here because the drift velocity is a vector that's in the direction of the current and not just a scalar magnitude like we had before, but that doesn't change things too much. If we express the drift velocity vector as just the magnitude times i hat, where i hat is a unit vector that's in the direction of the current, 
we can group the NQAV as just the current going through the wire. And then we're left with this as the force on the current carrying wire. L times the current times I hat crossed with B. We're pretty much done at this point, the rest is just convention. What's usually done in practice for convenience is to make L a vector, which has a magnitude equal to the length L, but a direction in the same direction as the current. And this is it then, the magnetic force that a straight current carrying wire experiences is the current I times the length vector L crossed with the magnetic field B. If we want the magnitude of the force, we just need the magnitude of the cross product, which would be the length times the field strength times the sine of the angle between the two. If we want the direction, we just use the right hand rule since we have a cross product. So pointing our right fingers in the direction of the first vector L or just the current direction and then curling them in the direction of the second vector B or the magnetic field has our thumb pointing in the direction of F. And that's all there is to it. But I should say this is only a good approximation if the wire segment we care about is straight. What happens if our wire curves around like this? At this point, you can safely skip the rest of the video if you're not dealing with calculus. If the wire curves around, you might think we just take whatever the length of this new wire is and just use that as our L here, but it actually doesn't work like that. The problem is, depending on how the wire curves, some parts of the wire might feel quite a strong force, some parts might feel no force at all, and some parts might feel a significant force but in the opposite direction. It all depends on the direction of the current or the direction of the charge movement at each of those sections. The force at each point we get from the right hand rule, remember V cross B. So what do we do now? The trick is to split the wire into infinitesimally small segments of length DL and then compute the force on each segment DL. That force we might call DF. And then just integrate all those DFs to get the total force F on the wire segment. We should note here that the current through each tiny segment is the same, so we can pull it out of the integral. It's just that the small length vector dl crossed with the magnetic field is going to change depending on how dl is oriented. So this ends up being our calculus-based definition of the total magnetic force acting on any current carrying wire, no matter how it might be shaped. It's just the current times the integration of dl cross b along the wire. So just to recap, you either got a straight current carrying wire or a curvy wire. If your wire is straight, then all you need to do is if you want the magnetic force on a current carrying wire, you applied this equation here. The magnetic force that a current carrying wire feels due to an external magnetic field is just the current times the cross product of the length vector with the external magnetic field vector. We saw how to deal with this in the earlier part of this video, and we'll work a lot more with this equation in the next video. As for the case with a curvy wire, the situation's almost the same. We just apply our straight wire formula to infinitesimal pieces of the wire with length dl, and then take all those contributions and add them up or integrate them to get the total force on the wire. 